who the parents were and stuff like that. Their driver's license. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, here's a dart. And, you know, in the old days, we would take the gun, just like on Animal Planet, and we would chase these animals around their enclosure. If it was a jaguar, they'd got a pretty good, and then we would chase them and we'd shoot them. And so then they would fall over from the injection, and then we could bring them in in this, it looks like a big canvas thing with, it'd probably take two, three people, because they'd probably weigh 100 pounds. Like a stretcher. Um, well, but it's, it's, it's uh, a like sling stretcher. a sling stretcher is a good way to put it. We no longer use the gun anymore. The animal gives their own injection now. How is that? So this started three years ago. And um, what they do, oops, you got to get back to Oh, I'm sorry. Um, but what they've trained the jaguar or the cheetahs, any animal that can get on their back legs, they will have him come up to the fence on his back legs. And when he complies with that, uh, you, you know, what they want him to do, then they're going to give him a reward, probably meat. So every week, once a week, they will get him to do that behavior. If he complies, he gets a reward. Then they're going to attach a stick, and they're going to start poking him in the abdomen with the stick. So each week it'll get harder and harder, so he starts to accept the pain that goes along with that poke. Then after a few months, then he's going to attach this dart. So now the animal's used to seeing this red feather thing on there. and. Once again, you're gonna keep the hub over the needle and he's gonna take the pain. So after, I'm, they gave me the impression after a year of doing this, the animal's very relaxed, coming up to the fence and allowing himself to be um, have some pain with this poke. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's time for the physical, only now they take off the needle hub. So now he comes up there and he's going to in, push himself into the needle and this time it'll have medicine in it and then he'll, within 10, 15 minutes, he's out cold. So that's how we've trained him. With zebras and other animals, they will attach it to a wall like this. The animal is taught to back into it with his back oh, hip wow. or haunch. Yeah, so they, they've got <laughs> different creative ways to train the animals to give their own injection. I um, just want to show you these x-rays. We have an x-ray machine back through here. Rocky came in in 2002. He was a wild desert tortoise. Here's the head and you can see the four legs, mm -hmm. and it's a desert tortoise, not a turtle. So Rocky was dying, and they took the x-ray, and look at this big mass in there. So Dr. Kevin was here at the time, he took a scalpula, which is a really sharp um, uh, knife. Can you see where he cut the shell and made this box? Oh yeah. But notice, he didn't cut through in this corner, he left this so it was still attached, so he could bend it back. He grabbed the mass, and there's Rocky's stone. Oh my goodness. Mm. And if you notice the shape, it's the same as, this is the actual stone that came out of Rocky. Wow. Now, what this is, is a bladder stone. Mm. It's like the equivalent, not the equivalent, but it would be similar to kidney stones. Mm. Only instead of being in those small nephrons, you know, our kidneys have millions of nephrons. Mm. This is in the bladder itself that's holding the urine that needs to be excreted. Well, what happens is when this is so big, it's sitting on the ureter, is it the urethra? Anyway, the tube that goes from the bladder to the outside, it's now plugging it. So wow. the toxins that are building up in that urine are becoming so poisonous, it was killing him. Mm -hmm. So that's why we had to remove it. And the reason we see these quite frequently in desert tortoises is because Tortoises do not drink water. They, they get their fluids from the vegetation, like the leaves and the vines. So when it gets to be August, September, and it's 120 degrees, there's no greenery for these tortoises. And so now they're getting really dehydrated. The calcium urates, phosphates that are in that concentrated urine start forming crystals because they're precipitating. Mm -hmm. So. Um, back in 2002, we actually took needle and sutures and we sewed that back together. I mean, that's like sewing through the cartilage in your nose or something, it's quite hard. Uh, three years ago, um, one of the keepers brought out another little tortoise and he had the duct tape around it and I said, well, did you super, or did, I just gave it away. Did you, <laughs> did you use sutures yeah. to sew it up? And now we use super glue, medical super glue, so we don't have to sew it because that was really hard. So the sad thing is, 
these tortoises cannot go back. Isn't that sad? Uh, they they um, are territorial. And you know, once they've had surgery, it usually takes two, three months for them to recover back here. And so if we would put them out into the, um, into the wild where they came from, since they're territorial, the other tortoises would attack them because it's not part of their clan. Yeah. And oh. the other thing is, when you've been in here for two, three months, you can pick up human rhinoviruses, you know, which are just respiratory viruses. And so this tortoise, he survived because he was on antibiotics. Oh, don't you hate that when you do that? <laughs> you, did you get a cramp? No, oh, I have an issue. Oh, yeah. Okay. But anyway, so um, once we don't have room for any more of these tortoises that come in, in Indio, clear at the end of the valley here, there's an agency that will take these tortoises and we actually then, they will adopt them out to local residents who will you, become a foster parent. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I have a telephone number if you're interested. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if you wanna come down here, I can show you where the large animal surgery, and keep in mind, um, it, I don't think I mentioned that the uh, camels and the zebras and those big, huge hoofed animals, they have their physicals out in the barn. Mm -hmm. yeah. They would never come in here. Um, all these pictures are animals that we have in our zoo. We are getting a white rhinoceros, and we're also getting a mountain lion, but they're all endangered species, and we, they're part of a breeding program because we do not want to inbreed animals so they yeah. start you know, having issues. So that's why we're only allowed to breed so many animals. You know, I know we could breed the, um, the wild African dogs. We've had lots of giraffes here. Um, and we've had quite a few um, uh, jaguars. So when you get the pups then, then they would be sent out to other zoos who can also breed them. Um, notice how big this is. Oh my gosh. And this is for animals supposedly over 60 pounds. But Two weeks ago, we actually had a bighorn sheep that we did a procedure, removed a mass out of his shoulder. So the 60 pound limit isn't really what they say, but we did have an auric here um, last year. Her teeth had grown, grown into her cheek and it was cutting her cheek so bad. She was 17 years old and she couldn't eat anymore because every time she tried to chew the hay or whatever, she would start bleeding and it was so uncomfortable. She would have died if she was in the wild. So we brought in a farrier, or is it fer farrier? Is that what he, a doctor who works on hoofs and teeth. And he actually had these long files and he was on his knees for three hours at this end. We had three um, keepers. One was having to hold up those tall, you know, horns. So, it, and then they had some device keeping her mouth open and then they were sawing off all those sharp points. <laughs> so it was pretty good. Last thing I'm going to point out is the another desert tortoise on the left-hand side. So can you tell me what all those round balls are inside? Babies? They are babies, but, but they don't have babies. Eggs. Eggs. They're <laughs> eggs. Okay, so she's got a lot of eggs, but that's not what's making her sick, because we wouldn't, she wouldn't be in here if she just, you know, had eggs. If you look down her spinal column, on the bottom third, you'll see something white. Yeah. What do you think that is? Looks like a nail. It is a nail. She swallowed a nail. She has a bowel obstruction. So what that means is she is so sick. She was wild, and she couldn't swallow. She couldn't eat. And when she'd try to eat something, then she'd end up regurgitating it because it can't go through. The nail was plugging her um, bowels. So um, Dr. Kevin at the time said after three days it was gone. They took another X-ray. Now that doesn't seem. It's it's a miracle in my opinion. And if you look at the right-hand tortoise, that tortoise was injected with barium contrast medium. Now that's the same kind of stuff they give old people, like me, uh, <laughs> when you have a colonoscopy. Colonoscopies, and it shows up in your intestinal tract. So that's what they did for that other one. But what's amazing is that nail had to go around all those curves. Why didn't it pierce the colon or get stuck again? I mean, that's a lot of curves to go around. Right. And yeah. she survived and excreted it on her own. Wow. So, um, I'll just quick point out the, see that tall door? If you go and look over here, you can see there's a, a ladder there. 
Our veterinarian can climb the ladder, stand at the top. The recovery room is on the other side of that, and it's got red padding all the way around, and that's to keep the animal from hurting themselves. As they come out of anesthetic, they start thrashing around. We don't want them having run into, you know, the bricks like that. And also, they would attack anybody opening the door. Mm. So that's why it's a safe, keeping our uh, veterinarian safe. Well, you guys have a great day, and enjoy the rest of your time at the zoo. Thank, Thank you. you.